Uh, wait a second. I built this maze. <laughs> I did it yesterday by hand and well, you could do it too. If you wanna build a maze in Minecraft, the good news is your doodles are a great place to start. But if you wanna make it fun, check out these 10 tips for maze building in Minecraft. Tip number one, hide dead ends. When possible, don't make it immediately obvious that a pathway is just gonna end because then the runner will know exactly where to go. Instead, you wanna hide little corners at the end of the halls, which makes the runner second guess themselves or have to all the way clear a corner rather than just immediately turning the other way. Tip number two, manipulate players. And by that, I mean their psychology. The player is probably going to want to take the shortest route from A to B if they can tell where they're headed. So don't make the first turn or the most obvious one the correct one. Instead, make it the second or even the third so they have to work their way around and can't just shortcut your maze. In the same vein, tip number three is to guide the eyes. You can put harder to go around walls in the correct route, and the player will probably go the way that's easiest for them to immediately access. Because going around, Although it will get them to the chest, they might not think of it right away. Tip number four is to vary hallway length. No one wants to be stuck in a maze where you're turning left, right, left, right, left, right. It's just, it's not fun at that point. Instead, you wanna give the player long stretches to run, which can give the player a potentially false sense of security. Often they lead to nowhere, but just sometimes they can be a free pass beyond some tricky sections. Having a variety of length in corridors, types of turns and dead ends can keep the maze feeling fresh rather than constantly having to be turning left or right. I'm going to share a secret. There's a trick to solving mazes that just involves keeping your left hand on the wall until you reach the exit. And well, surprisingly it works. So this tip is to eliminate the left hand trick. If someone were to try and follow this trick, they would just follow right around the edges and it would take a while, but eventually it leads them straight to the treasure or to the exit. However, you can block people from cheating your maze by creating infinite loops or islands in the middle that the left hand trick just won't be able to lead them to or out of for that case, unless they actually decide to use their brain. These leaves that look suspiciously like a G reminds me, be sure to look at your maze from a bird's eye view to make sure you don't spell out or make any symbols that you didn't intend to. Oh yeah, that was tip number five. Tip number six is a similar idea, but it's to bring it to life. Another way to eliminate the left hand trick is to have doors that sometimes open. This way, if they are doing the trick and then the door just happens to change while they're around it, they get stuck in a loop like this and can maybe get turned around. These moving doors also add this crazy amount of dynamic action to your maze that just makes it a lot more enjoyable to navigate. Parts of the walls or doors that open or close allow you to change the way that the maze works and even make it so that not even you know exactly how to solve the maze sometimes. If you're curious, this is what the redstone looks like for that little pop-up section. It's not the easiest, but it is pretty fun and it makes a little bit of sense once you do it a couple times. Tip number seven is to open it up. Consider adding these little courtyard style areas in your maze, because rather than just choosing to go left or right at an intersection, they have to choose whether to go uh, left, left, up-ish, up, right, back to the right. It just makes them do a lot more decisions and well, it's a lot more fun to be frank. Also, these can provide a nice breath of fresh air where the player doesn't have to look directly at walls for a minute. Tip number eight is to use 3D space. If you're building a maze that's meant to be explored in first person, why not take advantage of the extra dimension and make underground secret tunnels, bridges to go across, or even elevated maze portions? All of this stuff makes your maze more interesting to explore while making the player think more creatively on how to get to their destination. Tip number nine is to keep it fun. Mazes, although sometimes torturous, are normally pretty fun to navigate. So break it up a little by adding a watchtower to look around or a bridge or just different visual pieces of interest. Another benefit of this is your maze looks cooler from the outside. And finally, tip number 10, ignore these tips. Mazes are meant to be fun and spontaneous. And if you just follow everything I did in this video, the maze runner will know exactly what to do. They'll know you watched this video. So implement some of them sometimes, but otherwise just go with your gut instinct. Just do what naturally comes and that will ultimately what makes the most exciting and spontaneous and fun maze. And here's a bonus tip. Try playing some games in your maze. It doesn't always have to be about solving it. I have a video coming out soon on this channel where I play a maze runner manhunt game with my friends in the maze I built. It's super fun. With these tools, you'll be able to make a maze just like this or perhaps even better. I'd like to see your creations. So go ahead and send them to at easily on on Twitter and um, I'll check them out and we can make even cooler mazes. As you can tell, I'm a, <laughs> a little bit obsessed with mazes at this point with the one I built on the SP server, this one that I built all day yesterday and all of those very variations. Um, I can promise you my entire channel is not mazes. That's all I got for today and I'll see you next time.